Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Chris Turville. I'm delighted to be here to talk about Trainline's cloud and DevOps migration journey over the last 18 months. So let me start with this. Train travel in Europe is huge. It's about 15 times the size of um, the US market, and it's growing rapidly. Trainline are the number one independent rail ticket retailer across Europe. So we serve 24 countries, and we help 100,000 customers every single day make smarter journeys. And that's what we're really passionate about, is using technologies to make the travel experience awesome for our customers. Our turnover is about $3 billion in ticket sales, and we are about 17 years old. So we're not a born in the cloud startup. We've been around a while. Our business focus at the moment is two main things. One, massive growth across Europe, and two, a faster time to market. And we were fortunate about 18 months ago to be bought by KKR, one of the world's most successful and tech-savvy private equity companies. And together, we've been setting ourselves some quite ambitious targets. And what became clear was that the reality of our tech stack was not up to those ambitions. So we had a number of slow-moving physical data centers, and we also had a huge amount of waste in our development process, mainly due to environmental snowflakes and instability, which led to a lot of delays and waste. The reason we chose AWS um, to help us solve those technical problems was not just the range and depth of the feature set, but it was also about the pace of innovation. So we want to use Amazon's speed of innovation to help us innovate faster for our customers as well. These were the top four considerations for our migration. Number one, as always, is security. So we're a PCI level one certified organization. So we take online security and customer privacy very, very seriously indeed. Secondly was performance. We know if our website responds just 0.3 of a second slower, it costs us $10 million in our revenue. Uh, in terms of cost, we want to channel our money to our developers writing cool features for our customers, uh, not maintaining physical infrastructure. That's not our business. And finally, we had a lot of problems with our legacy system. So we had a big monolithic application architecture, and we had a number of nasty old technologies lurking around as well. So we had some biz talk, and we even found a VB6 application in the dark recesses of the code base where you're not meant to look. Uh, our migration plan went like this. So the first thing we did is we put 75% of the company through classroom training on AWS so that they were familiar with it and it sort of demystified the process. Because a change like this is, is fundamentally about humans and the emotion of that change. So managing that was very important. We also got AWS professional services in to help us just shape the initial architecture. The next thing we did was look at our core infrastructure. So we built and automated that and we put in place some basic standards so that when the applications were migrated in, there was some consistency in how those were done from the start. We then migrated our application services one at a time through dev staging and into production, uh, dealing with all the easy ones first, and then eventually getting to the um, big database that we had to migrate. That had to be done as a big bang, so everyone, including Amazon, actually came in at midnight to help us with that. Uh, this whole process took about nine months, the bulk of the migration. A word on the Oracle migration, we were running it on an Oracle Exadata, and we've actually, with a bit of tuning, been able to make it run in AWS 10% faster and obviously significantly cheaper than it was on the hardware as well. The biggest benefit of this, though, is that we now have a spare Exadata server that our CTO can use as a side table, um, although he has threatened to throw it in the river a couple of times, so he may well do that. Um, so where does that leave us now? So we are now massively more agile uh, as a company. Instead of doing one big platform release every six weeks, we're now doing 150 production deployments a week. And um, we're doing that because each change is very small. It's tested and deployed automatically. It's closely monitored with tools like New Relic. And it's easy to roll back because everything's done with blue, green, or canary deployments. So if there is a problem, we can just click a button and within a few seconds it toggles back. Another nice side effect is that we've got 60% more reliability since we went to continuous delivery. So this speed is not the expense of reliability or security or performance. It's a genuine improvement to our efficiency thanks to being on AWS and thanks to the automation tools that we put on top of that. 
So one of our big secrets um, is a tool we've written called Environment Manager. And that's what allows us to maintain this speed with good governance and good control. Basically, it's a framework for managing continuous delivery in AWS. Um, but the big difference is that it's unopinionated. It doesn't care if it's Windows or Linux. It doesn't care if it's single or multi-tenancy. It doesn't care if it's mutable, immutable, and so on. It's a very flexible tool. So we can have one tool set for all of our applications, whether they're legacy or whether they're shiny new technologies. Um, and I'm pleased to say that this is an open source product. So if it's something which sounds interesting to you, please do check it out and let us know what you think. Um, this diagram shows a high level view of our services. Um, so now the sort of EC2 server stuff is sorted. We're really focusing on, on Amazon's amazing data stack. So we're making Kinesis and Dynamo a much more central part of our data architecture. And the goal here is to deliver more personalized and contextual services to our customers. And a great example, something we've released recently, is called BusyBot. It's basically like ways for trains. So we can crowdsource 22,000 inputs from our customers and help them find tra uh, seats on busy trains. And this is a great example because we built it from idea to production in less than three months. It uses all the cool new serverless technology from Amazon. Um, and it just help, it shows how we're using Amazon to help us innovate faster for our customers. So 18 months later on, we are all in on AWS. All our dev test and production environments are in Amazon. We have converted our monolith to 250 microservices. We've got a 70% reduction in drag, 150 production releases a week, and we have 60% less downtime as well. And the cherry on the cake is that we've actually managed to save $1.5 million a year in our annual hosting costs as well. Now, before I hand back to Werner, I'd just like to take this opportunity to say a massive thank you to the Trainline technology teams who made this possible with their hard work and skill. It really was an amazing team effort to get this done so quickly. So thanks very much to them, and thanks to you as well. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you.